I'm Councilmember Jose Wiesar. We've been joined by Councilmember Mitch Englander and Councilmember Curran Price. This is the Planning, Land Use, and Management Committee. We will go through the multiple agenda item comment uh, cards as soon as I get them. Or we could start with item number one, report from Director of Planning. Welcome. Um, thank you, uh, Chair Wiesar and uh, members of the uh, committee. I do not have any update today. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. We will, there are no items on the multiple items cards either. So we can move to items. Actually, to item number two, please. Sure. Uh, item two, Councilman, this is a communication from the mayor relative to the appointment of Ms. Helen Lung to the East LA APC. Ms. Lung, are you here? Welcome. If you could uh, step up to the microphone, please, and uh, thank you for your willingness to serve. You're a resident of Council District 13 and previously served as a police permit review panel commissioner. Uh, anything that you'd like to share with the committee and your interest in serving on this commission? Thank you, Chair. Hi, good afternoon, council members. Um, again, my name is Helen Lerng, and I am a resident of Council District 13. Um, a little bit about my background. Uh, I have a background in public policy and urban planning, having previously served um, Council President Eric Garcetti many moons ago and understanding the, the complexities and the, the privilege of actually working on planning issues for the City of Los Angeles. Uh, today, I co-run a nonprofit urban design organization with a mission to help lower income communities and under-resourced neighborhoods shape their own growth through policy and architecture. Um, and in our work, we have the honor of working throughout LA to making sure that our work actually reflects the value of communities. So I'm especially excited to serve on the East Area Planning Commission uh, because of my passion towards community, of making sure that LA grows in a way that's appropriate and contextual, um, and to make sure that we have good policy since I believe that um, public policy, especially as it relates to planning, has an immense impact on just kind of the livelihood and the experience of Angelino. So um, I look forward to serving and I'm honored to be nominated. Great, thank you. Any questions for Ms. Lung? Mr. Price. Thank you for your willingness to be uh, to be actively involved and engaged, and I think you'll make a, a great uh, addition to the commission and do a good job for the citizens. I look forward to working with you. Thank you, Councilmember. Thank you, Mr. Englander. Um, I just wanted to uh, thank you not only for that, but your work with LA Moss, which is near and dear to my heart, and a great organization here in LA, and uh, wish you all the best. Appreciate thank you, Councilor. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, thank you for your uh, willingness to serve, and we will uh, move the mayor's uh, appointment, recommended appointment, to the East Los Angeles Area Planning Commission to full council without any objection. No objection, so ordered. Thank you. Item number three, please. Item three, Councilman. It's a communication from the mayor relative to the appointment of Mr. Max Reyes to the North Valley APC. Thank you, and for the record, we've been joined by Councilmember Marquis Harris Dawson. I wanted to make your grand entrance. Uh, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Reyes, thank you and so uh, thank you for your willingness to serve on the North Valley Area Planning Commission. Um, have you served in a previous commission for the city? I no, have not actually. This would be my first, first city okay. commission I'd be serving on. And um, anything you'd like to share with the committee and your interest in serving on this commission? Absolutely. Uh, thank you, Chair and Council Members. Uh, again, my name is Max Reyes. I grew up in the North Valley region and currently a proud resident. And I'd be honored through the APC to uh, continue my service in the community. Actually, I was a direct liaison uh, to, this, to this region. Um, uh, most recently as the Assistant Director of Government and Community Relations at Cal State Northridge and prior to that as uh, Area Representative for Mayor Garcetti 
and also uh, Senator Fran Pavley. And I'd love to continue my involvement uh, helping out the region. I know that I'm very passionate about this community and know the, uh, its needs very well. And thank you so much for your consideration. I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. Great, thank you. And uh, you went to UC Berkeley and also <coughs> currently attending USC. Who do you root for when they play each other? <laughs> Careful. It's, it's Careful. a little difficult. It's difficult. When UC's playing, I root for USC. When UC Berkeley's playing, I root for UC Berkeley. All right. So, I have to switch. And, and who won in basketball? The latest one. Berkeley uh, beat USC, right? The last basketball game they had. All right. The last one, yeah. Yeah, all right. <laughs> right, Roberto? Go Bears. <laughs> right. Uh, absolutely, Kevin. <laughs> all right, there who, you go. Who won the Rose Bowl? Sorry. Oh, who won the Rose Bowl? Quick story. I took my son to the last uh, Cal-USC basketball game. You, you know, I went to Cal undergrad, so I was trying to make my son become a Cal fan and then he gets there and half to they bring out the Rose Bowl trophy right USC does and so it had the opposite effect he, he walked away they're becoming <laughs> an SC fan anyway <laughs> so welcome and any questions for Mr. Reyes just a, a couple statements um well first with that I'm glad that your your son uh has has wisdom and <laughs> <laughs> clearly skips a generation uh, so um <laughs> the uh uh, Max, I've known you for many, many, many years, and you know I've seen you firsthand in the community, working with people, working on critical issues, um, and have always been a breath of fresh air. You look at everything from so many different perspectives and bring so much to the table. So I really appreciate it. I'm delighted that you're stepping up into this. We uh, this is an incredibly important uh, position that uh, we rely on uh, to make critical decisions that impact. Uh, our districts and most of the stuff you get is not terribly exciting uh, most of what you get in fact is just the opposite you get the appeals and the frustrations and you know um, angry uh, residents and um, uh, you know and, and uh, developers who are not willing to negotiate often and so uh, you take all that in and with the best interest of what's at hand what's what's the best interest for the community and and I know that you'll bring that spirit to this position so I truly appreciate you stepping up. Thank you. Thank you so much, Council Member. Thank you. And just to reiterate what Mr. Englander said, these are some real um, quality of life issues you deal with that impact the lives of uh, Angelinos each and every day. So thank Absolutely. you for your willingness to serve and the seriousness of what you bring forward to, to, to the job. Thank you and good luck and go Bears. Thank you so much. Go Bears. All right. Thank you. All right. Fight on. <laughs> Oh, he got more excited about the fight on than he did about the Go Bears. <laughs> All right. Uh, any objections? No objections to moving this forward to full council. Thank you. So ordered. Items, uh, item number four. Um, item four, Councilman, this is a planning commission uh, proposed draft recommendation or draft ordinance for a vesting zone change on, and a building line uh, removal for property in CD10 as it relates to the construction of a mixed use 228 dwelling unit project. Okay, thank you. Is uh, staff here to present on this item? Thank you. Welcome. Hi, uh, this is Oliver Nepperin with the uh, Department of City Planning. I, I think you read uh, item number five. If I... Yeah, yeah. yeah. Did you, did you intend to do four or five? I intend to do four. Oh, okay. I thought you skipped four. Four. Yeah. In, that in, in that case, the number four is a planning commission uh, proposed ordinance to make changes to the small lot uh, ordinance. Okay. Staff here on item number four, please. Good afternoon, council members. I'm Simon Pastusha with the Los Angeles City Planning Department. Um, I'm here regarding the the amendment to the small lot ordinance. Um, today before you is a commission action which is approving it's sort of a tightening of the regulations for small lots. We're adding in front yards are going back into the regulations for increasing the rear yard. We are um, adding other, we're giving the commission the authority to do um, design standards which in turn will be uh, more regulations on the project and during creating an administrative process for that so they're very clear and specific. Right now we currently have just um, design guidelines. The commission also took one zone which was the R2 zone and, and removed it from where small lots are allowed. So it is, and these by the way are always allowed in multiple family zones except for the R2 zone after this commission and the council approves this. Um, 
I think in quick summary, that's the change in the ordinance itself. We have had, um, as a background, this was a council motion that came in with about seven signatures, if I remember correctly, um, to update the small lot ordinance. The planning department didn't have the ability to do our code study section because they were busy doing recode, but internally the department reorganized and we had an, a, a management team that worked through this ordinance. We also did um, many community workshops throughout the city and um, took time after that to reconfigure the ordinance and take all the input and that's what we have circulated and gotten through commission at this point. There is, um, I think in a shorter version, there is one, um, uh, two technical corrections and um, uh, Councilman O'Farrell's office would like to come up and present those uh, technical correct language changes to you before you open the public hearing. And they're minor in nature, but I can briefly explain them after she introduces them. Thank you. Okay. Christine Peters from CD13. Uh, commissioners, good afternoon. Christine Peters, Office of Councilmember Mitch O'Farrell. Uh, thank you very much for having this item on the agenda today. Uh, Councilmember uh, co-introduced this motion July 1st, 2015 with his colleague Mike Bonin. It was seconded by uh, a number of other council members. It's a really important issue citywide. Uh, the Smollett Ordinance was first introduced in 2004 as a new form of infill development uh, in multifamily neighborhoods. Uh, ten years later, um, like anything else, we've seen that there need to be some corrections and some updates and ways to implement this process better. Um, so the council member, um, three issues on the motion were to create an adaptive reuse component so that we could encourage the reuse of existing uh, historic uh, bungalow courtyards, historic homes on large lots in some of our communities like Echo Park, Boyle Heights, uh, parts of South LA. You'll have fairly large lots with a small house tucked to the back of it where you could actually fill in on the lot without actually having to demolish the existing resource. And I think one of the largest complaints we hear citywide is that rather than doing this infill opportunity, we're demolishing all of the properties and then and starting fresh with ground up construction. So, so the adaptive reuse incentive is a really important one for all of us. And um, the red line that, that Simon referred to was simply that, uh, and I will hand it in, but basically uh, section B says bungalow courts, small lots, and we need to add existing dwellings on a small lot, so that will actually protect those individual homes that might be on a large 10 or 15,000 square foot lot, which we then can keep and preserve that home and, and add new structures in, and the non-conforming uses of the existing structure will be maintained, which we hope will incentivize um, developers to actually take advantage of this uh, adaptive reuse option, rather than, again, take away these you know, character-defining houses and buildings and courtyards that contribute to the historic fabric of many of our neighborhoods in Los Angeles. Um, the other issue is to deal with fences and walls. And again, it's one of the complaints that we hear all the time citywide is that because oftentimes with a small lot, there is not a side yard or a rear yard, depending on the configuration of the development, that there is no clear definition of how high the fences can be on a side or a corner lot. And so I think that Simon and his team did a really good, good job on defining how a side yard should be defined in a small lot development and limiting fence heights to three and a half feet for side and six feet maximum for, um, for rears. So um, I will hand those out in more detail to staff, but I think it's a fairly simple technical update that we're asking for. And um, otherwise, the intent of the ordinance and the, the map revisions and um, the design guidelines, with I, which I think citywide are the most important issue because they'll address many of the things that we always hear complaints about that, that the design guidelines are not enforceable, which they currently are not. And so these will become standards, which will be enforceable, and people won't get to pick and choose anymore. They will either give us interesting roof lines and articulation. They'll either separate the buildings every six units. It won't any longer just be optional. We'll be able to enforce this. So um, Councilmember O'Farrell asked that you um, approve these today, and uh, let's get them to City Council as soon as possible for adoption. Okay. Thank you. So these are the edits here, the proposed amendments, as we have, okay. 
Yes, and staff, um, we've reviewed them and worked with the council office on this language. And second, we looked at the environmental findings, and these were all tightening of regulations or clarify, clarifying language in the existing ordinance that was pr approved by the commission um, at this point. But these are things, as we've changed the code, there are other things you have to, there's all these things that are connected as you move through. So suddenly the front yard issue was one, and then also clarifying the language to make sure it could apply to all existing structures on a site. Okay. Price. All the work that's uh, gone in on this, uh, the, the your leadership and the uh, council offices involved and staff, so thank you. Uh, <clears throat> when determining uh, parking requirements, are the numbers rounded up or down? Uh, for example, if a developer is proposing 11 units, the calculation would be 2.75, correct? Uh, would the developer be required to build two or three? parking spaces. Uh, this is important, especially in areas where there's a lot of density. My area, uh, Councilman Marquis Harris Dawson, I think is, is in a similar situation. Uh, uh, you know, we need more guest parking, not less guest parking. You know, around the university, of course, you have, you know, eight or nine kids in one room. Not literally, but you have a lot of density there. A lot of my uh, units, uh, you know, you got multi-generational folks, and so you have sometimes four, five, six, seven folks in the house, two, three cars. Uh, so I just think we ought to be doing all we can to uh, uh, encourage more parking, not less, especially in those areas uh, uh, where there's a lot of density. And so I, I would just uh, request, Mr. Chairman, if, if we have an opportunity to uh, express a preference or establish a rule, I would rather us um, uh, round up in terms of requirements uh, as opposed to uh, rounding down or not addressing it. Oh, perfect. Um, we usually do that in part of the subdivision process and it's part of the advisor agency policies. My understanding is that we do round up, but we are going to be issuing an updated version of our, our advisor agency parking policy and we'll make sure that language is in there about rounding up when you're above, like at 2.5, 2.51, you would round up to the next whole Correct. guest parking space. Correct. We absolutely will make that incorporate into the um, our director's uh, um, uh, advisory agency um, procedures after this is adopted. All right. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. If that could thank you. be the so, order, I'd appreciate it. Thank you very much. So, you came. No. no. <laughs> All, right. All right. You're astounded by the conversation. <laughs> what, woke, you, woke you up or what? <laughs> Small lots are a big issue in CDA. Yeah. So, uh, Mr. Price's issue of rounding up, um, so do we, t today we're hoping to um, move this forward and ask the city attorney to draft the motion, the uh, ordinance, but you're saying that those changes should be made in your advisory materials for the planning department? Yeah, correctly. Right now, the guest parking requirement doesn't sit in the small lot um, ordinance, and it also doesn't sit in the code. It's actually under an advisory agency policy for guest parking. Okay. So we're updating that policy and we'll do that. We're expecting to do that before this ordinance becomes effective, but around the same time. Okay. And so we'll clarify that language to make sure it is, I guess, parking is rounding up. All right. And so would that come through uh, committee as well when you update No, it's those? actually directly under the authority of the advisory agency. So it would just be one of our follow throughs and we'll make sure that you're notified when that, um, that notice comes out from the director slash the advisory agency. Okay, Mr. Price, if it's okay with you, as in our directions today to ask them to draft the ordinance, I would ask for a report back that um, comes back with this on where we are with the updates on that for the advisory policies. That's, that's okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Um, I do, and uh, we've been joined by Councilmember Gil Cedillo. Uh Do we have any? Uh, let me call the other council office just, just in the event they also have some. Do you want to speak before or after Ezra Gale from CD11? No, afterwards? Okay, all right, so let's go to public comment now and then we'll come back. Doug Haynes, Adrian Scott Fine, and uh, Christine Renhow, or Gal. Good afternoon, Welcome. hi, my name is Doug Haynes with the East Hollywood Neighborhood Council. And while these changes are long overdue and they're most welcome, there are a number of issues that our community has been concerned about that are not being addressed, particularly since CD13 has been ground zero for small lot subdivisions. We have approximately 26% uh, of all small lot subdivisions in the city. Primarily, 
there's no addressing really of the architectural compatibility uh, with the existing historic street context. Many of these projects are going into neighborhoods that have uh, homes that were built 100 years ago. Um, there's no transitional height requirement, as is in SNAP, our specific plan, which would really lessen the impact of these projects. Um, there's no real building setback requirement from the front. And by putting in only the underlying restriction for a front yard setback of 15 feet, most of these areas have a much greater front yard. And therefore, you're still having these massive buildings out in front that are overwhelming the street context and are totally inappropriate. So I hope you consider those items when you consider approving this ordinance. Thank you. Thank you. Adrian Scott Fine. Good afternoon, Adrian Scott Fine with LA Conservancy. We're here to lend our full support for these amendments and corrections. Um, we think that will go a long way in addressing some of the issues that have been raised since this ordinance was initially passed. So we're supportive of that. We're supportive of the technical amendments that have been suggested today as well. And we just want to thank the planning department for their hard work on this, as well as the council in supporting this and moving it forward. Thank you. Thank you, Christine Rangel. Good afternoon, Christine Rangel speaking on behalf of the LA Ventura chapter of the Building Industry Association. Uh, we represent the thousands of men, women, and their member companies who design, plan, build, and remodel homes throughout our region. We wish to thank the Department of City Planning for their tireless and thorough efforts on a really great ordinance. Our industry has heard the communities loud and clear. The neighbors want greater front and rear yard setbacks, regulations for fence and wall heights, restrictions on lot coverage, and defined land process for conversion of existing bungalow courts. These changes will not be easy regulations to adhere to. However, we acknowledge that such changes will reassure concerned neighbors, and therefore, in demonstration of our commitment to the city, our industry, our association, and our builders, we support these changes. Thank you. Ezra Gale, CD11. Good afternoon, council members. Ezra Gale for Councilman Bonin. Just want to take a quick second to thank the planning staff. This was a couple years coming, and with their tireless work, we have a, a really stellar ordinance in front of us uh, that addresses many of the concerns that community members have raised uh, about a number of issues. So we really thank them for that hard work. We want to thank CD13, too, for leading the charge on this and coming up with some great recommendations to help us preserve and protect existing bungalow structures, particularly in an area like Venice. This will allow uh, property owners um, to retain existing bungalows instead of tearing them down and developing something overly large. So we uh, lend our full support to those recommended changes and to the ordinance. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions or comments? I do want to thank the planning department for their work. Um, they put a lot of time and effort into this um, from uh, when this item was first uh, conceived. Uh, a lot of changes and improvements have been made to it. Um, I also want to thank Council Member O'Farrell for moving this forward and he and his staff's leadership on these improvements. Uh, they've been working diligently to problem solve uh, the ordinance. Um, they worked with uh, the construction industry and community uh, various neighborhoods to come up with what we have today. I think overall it's going to help um, the quality of life in our neighborhoods uh, with the type of uh, new details this ordinance has. Um, so unless there are any other questions, I'd like to um, refer the motion to the city attorney, approve and refer the motion to the city attorney uh, for the drafting of an ordinance and we will incorporate the amendments as proposed today by CD13 and we will request in the directions that uh, the planning department report back at the time or before this ordinance is brought back to this committee on the issues with respect to rounding up for parking as uh, requested by Mr. Price. Any objections? Seeing none, so ordered. Okay. Thank you. Item number five. Item five is a Planning Commission draft ordinance divesting zone change and a building line removal for a mixed use project containing 228 dwelling units in CD10. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, committee members. Oliver Neffern with the Department of City Planning. 
Um, this project that you have before you today is a uh, mixed-use project with 228 residential units and 17,000 square feet of commercial ground floor commercial retail and restaurant space. It's located at the intersection of Wilshire and Wil uh, Wilton in the Wilshire community plan area. Uh, the project included a zone change uh, to allow for a TQ C4-2 zone, uh, a building line removal along Wilshire Boulevard, uh, a director's determination for reduction in uh, required open space, transitional height relief, as well as a site plan review. Uh, the City Planning Commission approved the transitional height, the uh, reduction in the open space and the site plan review on July 14th and then recommended uh, the approval that the City Planning Commission approve the requested zone change and building line removal. Um, staff uh, has now uh, recommends uh, along with City Planning Commission uh, those actions, the zone change and the building line removal. Great. Thank you. There are no speaker cards on this item. Any questions? See no questions, we'll move to uh, approve, um, what's the appropriate uh, wording here? Just uh, approve the zone change, the building line removal. So moved. Uh, any objections? Seeing no objections, so ordered. Thank you. Items six and seven we could take together. There are no speaker cards. Um, Mr. Englander, uh, these, uh, this, this is in your district. You wish the planning department to first present, or do you? Would you like to? No, I don't think we need to okay. go through a full presentation. I'm okay. pretty aware of the project mm -hmm. going okay. on for many years. Um, so a few changes um, that have already been circulated. So um, qualified conditions and classifications um, have been in changes and amendments. Um, I do want to make a statement, th though, um, and I'll bring it up some on, on another time. But we have. Uh, the PVP, the Professional Volunteer Program, um, for you colleagues that I'm not sure if you're all aware of it. It's been around for many years. I was taken back, not in this project particularly, but in a different one. But they did weigh in, and most of these recommendations are coming from them. So there's a group of professional folks, architects and others, that get together and review projects for us. And they volunteer their efforts and their experience, their knowledge, their education, which is phenomenal. Um, they do so, though, at the end of a project, after neighborhood council's heard it, after the council office has perhaps negotiated on behalf of the neighborhood council and the other stakeholders, and it's been designed and redesigned, and they sort of come in at the tail end and add their touches, and often their touches could be two or three pages of significant changes, um, which weren't in the spirit of at all what the community wanted. Um, and while I think in most cases, and oftentimes it could be appreciated, I also found out that they even do this when you've got a DRB in place, Design Review Board, that's actually gone the extra mile, volunteer group that's just doing that. And they completely changed what the DRB has done. In this case, that didn't happen, but in a previous case, I just experienced it did. So I think we need to look, start looking at um, that and, um, and figuring out a way to give them um, some better opportunities and guidance um, and bring them in early in the process if they're gonna have a say, if at all. Um, and it is related to this, because I see Terry say, bring it back home, the, the item, because our city attorney keeps us in check. Um, it is because it changes a lot of the classifications and um, building design elements that they uh, added. And, um, and so I've circulated those changes. I'd ask for your support on that. Um, in terms of six and seven, I'd like to adopt the zone change um, to the TQ RD31 and subject to the amended conditions that I've circulated and find that the project was environmentally assessed under the case. And, uh, and then adopt the attached findings. And then as it relates to item seven, which is the 7,000 Woodlake Avenue, to adopt the GPA to low residential uh, and the zone change to TQ RD5-1, subject to the amended conditions, and then find for that the project was environmentally assessed under the case and adopt those findings as such as well. And I'd ask for your support with those changes on six and seven. Okay, thank you. And um, just for those who are listening in the audio, if you could read the item six and seven into the record. I omitted to have them read in the record before we took up the items. Sure. Um, item six, Councilman, this is a city planning commission draft ordinance. It's a zone change uh, for, a, for a 35 small lot subdivision in CD12 uh, located at 23200 West Sherman Way. And item seven, Again, uh, this is a communication from the Planning Commission. 
a resolution, a general plan amendment, um, and a zone change for 16 small lot subdivision in CD12 located at 7000 North Whitla Whitlake Avenue. All right. So uh, any questions on uh, the motion as proposed by Mr. Englander for items six and seven? No questions were moved by Mrs. Cedillo, seconded by Mr. Englander. Along with the amendments that Mr. England received. Along with the amendment as amended by Mr. Englander. Any objections? No objections, so ordered. Thank you. And that leaves public comment. There are no public comment cards. This means adjourned. Wow. Wow. That is a record. Uh,